The debate on health care continues in Washington. I'm Julia Gray, and this is Take 5. Recent reports indicate that a public option is losing support in the Senate. I spoke with Oregon Senator Jeff Merkley about the working health care plan, and he disagrees that it's not a done deal to eliminate the public option. Well, I, I certainly uh, don't think it's off the table. Uh, the uh, uh, proposal that was put together by a working group is one we're trying to get all the details on. I'm very concerned about uh, any loss of a, of a, of a public option. I'm, we're getting conflicting uh, stories on, on exactly what happened in those negotiations and exactly what's in it. One piece of it is that there would be an advanced opportunity to buy into Medicare starting at age 55. That could be a really good deal. I can tell you I've met so many families, including a lot of families in Central Oregon, who were trying to figure out how do we get through the next two or three years before we turn 65. Uh, in order to uh, address health issues. So it could be a big benefit, but it all depends on how it's constructed. And so we're looking to details on on that piece. Uh, And uh, there's another strategy which uh, was being debated, saying that uh, insurance companies need to put 90% of their dollars directly into care. This is a a Minnesota law that uh, might be highly beneficial, or it might just be an accounting exercise that would have no real impact. So uh, there, there's some new ideas that were introduced. I think there's going to be uh, several more rounds of discussion, but I have felt that you need to have a new player, and an affordable health care option could really help our small businesses on the general health care front. So uh, more work to be done. The Senate voted to reject an amendment that would have denied women basic health care services and restricted a woman's right to choose. You cast a vote opposing that. Yes, the longstanding tradition is that no public dollars would be used to fund abortion. And that was what was in the basic bill. Uh, Some members felt that they wanted to go further and take away a woman's ability to, to purchase, even with her own dollars, a full range of reproductive services. And I thought that's completely unacceptable. Uh, those, those are available right now in terms of uh, insurance programs, and we shouldn't be building a new insurance exchange designed to increase competition, increase opportunity, and then take away rights that people currently have. So, so that, that was why I opposed that. I, I felt the, uh, the longstanding agreement, Hyde agreement, that no government dollars go, in, go into uh, abortion was the right balance to continue. And so uh, I helped rebuff efforts that that went beyond that. Merkley has joined forces with other senators to construct a health care bill of rights, and they hope that will outline health care reform in a way that makes sense to everyone. And these involve buying insurance if you have a pre-existing condition. In other words, insurance companies cannot ban you from from insurance, ending discrimination, ending dumping, the sort of dumping that occurs, you pay your premiums for 10 years, then you get sick, and then you get a notice from your insurance company saying they're not renewing your insurance, which is just outrageous. Uh, Guaranteeing the right to remain on your parents' insurance through uh, your 26th birthday, uh, which uh, helps cover that gap as as young folks are getting themselves uh, established. Uh, Guaranteeing preventive care without extra costs. Uh, and guaranteeing that the health insurance won't have a lifetime cap that essentially uh, is a, a bit of a scam. You you think you have insurance, then you get sick, and you quickly find out that in the fine print there was a, a lifetime cap that meant you hit 50000 or 100000 and you can get no more help. And now that you have a preexisting condition, you cannot get insurance anywhere else. Uh, so uh, uh, those are all items that are guaranteed on the exchange that we're creating to make health care available and more competitive. And I think it's, uh, it was a, 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 a real pleasure to uh, uh, put that idea forward, have it embraced, and then kick it off this week. When it comes down to the final document about health care reform, is it ever going to be less than 15 pounds of paper? Well, probably <laughs> <You know>? not. <laughs> readable, a little more readable for yeah. the average person. No, I tell you, it's, uh, it, it, that is one of the challenges uh, that has so many elements. For example, we're doing uh, a whole section of the bill which addresses uh, manpower. Uh, we know that nurses and doctors are retiring. 
we need to uh, train more nurses and doctors, or we're going to have a huge imbalance between the health care providers and, and the number of public that need health care. And so that just that alone takes up a big chunk to lay out the strategies and make sure they're written in the appropriate uh, legal language. I'm Julia Gray. Take 5 is a production of 1110 KBND Radio News. Depend on us.